right there. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is my second time recording chapter three because I don't know if you noticed, but I up uploaded chapter one and two, and then there was an abrupt stop, and that's because I uploaded chapter three and it said it was processing, and it was like at the 98 mark of processing, and then, well, it just stopped trying. So there's that. I apologize for the delay, but it's here at last. I forgot that, uh... I forgot the controls are... Nice. Tom's Expedition Log, 31st of May, 1901. I saw Crook die. He was covered in something like tar. As I approached, he shouted at me to get a... As I approached, he shouted at me to stay away from him. He didn't want it to get me to. I can't find my way back to the upper decks. I don't know what to do. creepy shit and we're back to the regular ship I have to find something to turn on here we go I guess this is it Sorry, let me get mouse out of the way. For some reason I thought that the mouse was part of the controls. I'm actually kind of happy to get a second run at the end of the game because uh, I don't know if you know anything about the game, but well, that might spoil. I'll stop. Because um, when I played before, I wasn't totally satisfied with the ending, and I don't know if I did it wrong or if I could do it better uh, or if I can even do anything differently, but I have the second chance to do it, so here we are. just to get back. Okay. I already don't know where I am. I get disoriented so fucking easily in this game. And also I've completely forgotten the solution to puzzles and like where to fucking go for everything. The mug is stained brown with tea. Tea sounds kinda good right now. Let's... No. I need to go down. That's what she said. No switches over here. Let's bring the other one back, I guess. Because I don't think I can drop the other one down, so... Doesn't matter now that we're up. Oh, that was alright. This fucking does that double click sometimes. Oh, yeah, now that we have this guy, now it doesn't matter. Cool. Go up 
first. And I'll explore down in a minute. The radiator appears to be broken. No shit. Did that one move? The one on the right, is it? It looks different now, doesn't it? I think it moved. Let's see what's in here. The ingredients for beef bourguignon are scattered across the counter. How can they even tell that it's beef bourguignon after all this time? Shouldn't it be like totally decayed? Let's go up before we go the other way. Wet look trousers are in at the moment. Har har har. Alright, nothing. Dearest Alice, the boat will sink soon. The boilers are overheated and overpressured. I am certain they will explode within minutes, and yet I refuse to die in the explosion. I keep trying to remember the moment I opened the crate. The thing inside felt alive. I can feel its warmth flooding my veins. I remember I heard a voice when I opened it. It was a language I could not understand. I do not know why I continue to write to you, despite knowing you can never reply. Your faithful husband, Isaac. Oh, I think I remember this. things. Thank you. 
Oh, damn. Fucking things. I think someone's arguing outside. It's so hard because I'm used to a lot of like negative outside noise, like people yelling or being drunk or whatever. And here, I hear people being loud, and I'm like, "Oh shit, someone's fighting!" And then I stop to listen, and they're actually just like enjoying themselves. And it kind of, <laughs> kind of annoys me. It's like, who the fuck are these people just having a good time? Damn, this is slow. Okay. Are we add something new? Yes, we are. Tom's Expedition Log 1901. We are getting less descriptive. And a lot more like staccato and kind of poetic with the writing because everyone's losing their shit. It's all my fault. Everyone is dead because of me. I took the silver box from its hands. Then I started dreaming of a man made of light. He was coming to take it away from me. He was terrifying. He wanted me to return it to the totem. He closed it away where it belongs. When I looked inside the box, I couldn't understand what I saw. It was so dark and beautiful. I felt it escaping. Oh, here we are. We're at something big. Something big and important. Looks like there's some kind of lettering on the wall. A E F three E4, something like that. Don't know if it's relevant, but it is there. Damn. Okay. No, no light tricks here. But there is that guy over there to the left. The uh, lantern block thing. Oh! Can we make it? Oh, we can't make it. How do we get up there? Nothing. How did I? How do I do this? Uh, that's that's so frustrating. Uh, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, I could totally make it. I'm so close. And then you can't. They, they made it so that it's just too far. Just barely too far. Okay. one we already read. Yeah. I do not freaking know where I'm going. I know I have to get rid of some of these like walls. I can't go anywhere. I guess I'm supposed to be down there. Maybe I'm, maybe I can make it. I mean, I was able to make the other thing. I 
I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. <sighs> Seriously, they just make it just out of reach. So lame. All right, let's ride this baby up. This might not be a good idea. I can't remember if this is a good idea or not. Okay. Does it hurt me? I'm so sorry. Oh, poor baby. Oh, it's that thing. I need to use that thing? Oh, there's a switch there. Oh. Ooh, now it's like pulsating. Oh, oh my god, we crushed him. Messed up. I know there's so much caring in my voice right now. We'll go over and uh, inspect the damage in a minute. I just kind of want to see what's over here. Nothing. And what about here? Oh, there's a ladder we missed. Tom's Expedition Log, 20th of March, 1901. This part of the totem represents Seoul. It reminds me of... It reminds me a bit of the Chinese yin yang. It reminds me a bit of the Chinese yin yang. Crook said, Soul is above mind. The hands represent body. According to Crook, body is above strength. He said I could hold on to the silver box for now. So, let me just cheat real quick and take a picture of this. Because I know it has something to do with those blocks we went past. Okay. Alright, let's go see if we can reach this ladder. We totally can. Why did we not climb up the ladder? There we go. Christ. That was complicated. Whoa. What was that? Oh, okay. Hello. Oh, What do I keep hitting? Oh. Yo! Break it open! Why is that lighting so weird? That's really fucking weird. back here. Alright, let's just go. Oh no. That was close. I was like, there are spikes here. Or are they here? Oh, they're here. Oh shit, I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> Rip! Cool. <laughs> it puts me right in front of where I need to leave. Okay, we go here. And then down here. Nothing? Huh. Oh, I didn't realize that this is a moon. See when it's lit up? Oh. So clever.
I feel like I'm supposed to use this block. I mean, did it just crush them? Is that all it was there for? Okay, so we gotta put these in order. So, body is above strength. The hands represent body, body is above strength. So I think this guy is first. Just do it. We'll just see what happens and do it. And there's a slot for them. Okay, so next is the hands because they represent body, and body is above strength. the moon and it's above mind so this is next and then soul the wood is starting to green with algae oops wrong side You have sealed in the darkness. Ah. And have been cast in stone to retain, remain its eternal guardian. And have been cast in stone to remain its eternal guardian. So. So that, I think that's it. I think that's the end. Yep. There's the credits. This is all the credits for the game. Oh, is that a light up there? Can we do a light thing? Oh, hey. Very cool. So yeah, that is Reveal the Deep. Um, when I played before, I didn't notice what happened when those, those little zoom ups happened. Like when it went from Like when I went, so when I played before, I didn't notice those little zoom ups that happened. Um, like when I went and I stepped from the platform onto the like totem pole that I made, um, the little places it zoomed to, I realized that like the the little body shapes that we came across, those emptied out. Um, or they like cleared out of the room and the two places we looked and so the first place was bodies especially in the second place like the the metal on the ship stopped looking corroded something like that and the first time I played this I 
Okay, so boom, webcam. This is also the first time you've seen a webcam on this channel. I was gonna talk about the game a little bit, but then I thought it would be weird to just have like the game just sitting on screen and just hearing my voice. So now I can at least look at me while I talk. Not that I have that many important things to say. Um, anyway, so I'm kind of glad that I had to replay the third chapter again because some things happened that I didn't notice the last time. And when I played before, I was looking around online trying to see if I played the ending right or if there were other endings or if there were like potentially things that I could have missed to make the ending more satisfying. But I found no answers. I saw everybody play it the same way as I did. Everybody had the same ending that I did. And everybody was just as confused as I was. And I realized that it's kind of like a game you can interpret. Is that a word? I realize it's a game that you can interpret however you want, or you can at least kind of like fill in the clues yourself. Um, but what I liked is that this game kind of made me think of when you're trying to remember something that's happened to you, and you know really well what happened, but because it happened so long ago, your memories start to deteriorate a little bit, and just because of the way our brain works, our brain tries to fill in the gaps with things, um, or what would have seemed right, so we start to remember things a bit weird. So going through the game, um, finding all those little notes and letters, it's like the parts of the memory that I, or like my character, remembered really well. And then going through the ship was all of the murky stuff, like we kept finding these rooms that were half there, or we'd shut our light off and then a room would appear. Um, and it was just in general, a little bit kind of confusing and disorienting. Um, but that was why the game was cool, and the mechanics were really cool, especially the fact that the only controls were the arrow keys and the spacebar and the E button, or the e, the e key. And the E key was for interacting with things, just like in most games. Spacebar was for turning the light on and off, and then of course arrow keys were for movement. But the space bar, turning the light on and off, and having that be more than just turning your light on and off, and ha having that incorporate into the puzzle aspect of the game, I thought they did it really well, and I thought it was one of the few ways recently that I've seen a company make a mechanic that's as simple as that, but have it mean so much more later on. Um, especially when your reflex in a creepy game like this is to always keep your light on and to be like, should I turn my light off here? Is something gonna attack me? Um, this game obviously wasn't combat heavy. Uh, this game didn't have combat at all, but I'm sorry, I'm not trying to run on forever with this, but I don't know. I, I, like I said in the first episode, I tried this out because I randomly found it on Steam and it was really cool and I think you should play it for yourself. Yeah. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.